Here are five tips how to make your watercolors more transparent looking. Tip number one, and this may seem obvious, but use transparent colors. Watercolor paint can be complicated and there are some colors that are more transparent than others. The least transparent and the most opaque colors are chalky, heavy earth colors. And these colors are great for mixing grays. They're great for a lot of things, but for achieving transparent glowing watercolor, they are not. These colors include, but are not limited to, burnt sienna, the ochres, cerulean, all those heavy granulating paints, and then other granulating paints that aren't considered earth colors, but are heavy and granulating are ones such as ultramarine blue, which I love ultramarine blue, but you've gotta be careful with it if you want truly transparent color. Tip number two, use plenty of water. And when you mix a lot of water in with your paint, then it allows the paint to move around and it's hard to explain, but it allows the watercolor to do its transparent thing. It really shines when you let it move around and do what it wants to do. So use plenty of water and that will help your colors look really transparent. Tip number three is to keep your colors changing. Even in areas where your values aren't changing, the lightness or darkness isn't changing, keep your colors changing. And one way to do this is with each brush full of paint that you get off your palette, change the color in your paintbrush a little bit. If you're using blue, then pick up a little red to have a more purple. If you're using purple, pick up some more blue to get it more blue. Tip four is use paints that mix well together. Use primary colors, a yellow, a red, and a blue that mix well with each other. For example, some blues like manganese blue does not mix well with red. It makes black. It does not make purple at all. However, cobalt blue mixes with both yellow and red equally well, making it a good color to use as your primary blue. The colors that I like that are my favorite to use as the primary colors include Winsor & Newton Cobalt Blue, M. Graham Naphthol Red, and Holbein Oriolan. Tip number five is to use analogous colors when mixing, as opposed to mixing together complementary colors. What do I mean by this? Analogous colors sit next to each other on the color wheel. Complementary colors sit across from each other on the color wheel. If you mix complementary colors together, they make browns and grays. If you mix analogous colors together, they make sparkling, transparent, glowing colors. So when you're painting a painting and you're thinking about what color should I paint next to this other color I just mixed, or what should I pick up on my brush since I have a lot of blue in my brush, think in terms of picking up a purple instead of an orange, for example. All right, now I've given you these five tips. Now let's watch me paint a painting and I will use these five tips. I'll sprinkle them throughout the explanation so you can actually see these tips in action. All right, so I'm gonna speed up some of this footage. If you wanna watch this footage in real time, you can join my Patreon and watch me explain and paint this in real time, get the downloadable line drawing so you can paint with me. But there you saw me mixing up my cobalt blue, mixing up my naphthol red, my Holbein Oriolan, and look how beautifully they all work together. As I paint these colors onto my painting, they're staying fresh and beautiful and clean. They do not look muddy at all. And I'm using very, very watery paint. I'm using my three quarter oval by silver black velvet to start the painting. And that's typically what you wanna do. You wanna use a larger brush at the beginning of the painting. You wanna paint your lighter areas at the beginning of the painting. And then as you progress, you get darker and darker and you get smaller and smaller brushes. And there I got some ultramarine blue for the heavier parts and I'm mixing a black. So that's the only time that I'm gonna use a heavy color in this painting is when I mix my black. I mix that black from ultramarine blue, naphthol red and Holbein Oriolan and look how black it came out. And I painted cream consistency paint into the moist paint there to create that nose. And it was a beautiful nose. Later on, I went over it with pure lamp black in just a few parts, like just the nose hole and the edge 
to punch up parts of it, but most of that nose stayed dark enough. And here, look how much my reference photo is helping me. I can see now that those shadows, for example, under the ear are orange. Before I was painting them as brown mud. <laughs> so my reference photo that I punched up with the saturated color really helped me see what colors I needed. And this is the thing with watercolor, always start with bright, saturated color pop colors, and you can always gray them down later. But if you start with gray colors, you can't make them brighter later. Unlike other mediums where you can just paint straight over things like oil and acrylic, you can't do that with watercolor. Here I was playing with painting with things from my yard. It didn't work out there, but it did work in other paintings. I can't wait to show you guys that. So stay tuned in my channel. Hopefully I'll be making a video about that soon. All right, and then when everything is dry, then you can paint over areas again. And I'm using very pure colors here, just my cobalt blue and naphthol red mixed together to make that beautiful purple. I'm painting the shadow around his eye there. That's kind of a triangle shape. And then of course, as that dries, I can paint the black eyeliner in. I'm using lamp black there. And that is a trick that I tell my students about all the time. Wherever you want the most attention, put the most contrast. So you put your darkest darks like lamp black in small details in the eyes, and that helps the viewer look at the eye. Getting That's my cobalt blue there. And I'm mixing it into the colors I already have so it's not a blue neon color. But it is still a very clean, beautiful color because I'm using such a limited palette and I'm using a palette of paints that work well together. That is so key. And I also think it's so key to work from a reference photo that helps you remember, keep all these colors clean. <laughs> and see, now I'm gonna paint the background. And see what I did, I have that wide brush and I put blue on one side and um, blue red on the other just to keep my brush strokes interesting and to keep that background dynamic. And then while everything's still wet, I'm painting the orange parts of the chest right into that background so they join there. I talk to my students about that all the time on Patreon too, how important it is to have soft edges and join um, parts of the background into your main subject. And I do talk about that all the time, but I chose a blue and purple background for this because the dog is mostly warm colors, which is really helpful because it helps the dog pop forward. And then the background can be cool. So that contrasts with the colors in the dog and the cool colors make the background recede into the background. It's very hard to pull off a background with a bunch of yellows and reds in it. It can be done. It has been done. Uh, I don't recommend it, <laughs> but you can try. It's just harder to make the background look right if you make it yellows, mostly yellows and browns and reds, all warm colors because warm colors come forward. So I love to make my backgrounds kind of a grayish blue purple a lot. And this painting was perfect for that because the dog has so much yellow and orange and you want that contrast. And he has a very light head so I'm painting um, light colors around his head first to see if I can get away with that. And if I decide, decide I need to punch up the background even more to pop out his ears and his light spots of his head, I'll do that, which I do end up doing. But even here, this is a gray, but because I've added so much water to it, it still looks like light is shimmering through this because I'm using a lot of water. I'm leaving some white spots and that makes the painting look like it's almost shimmering and glowing. So that's another trick. Another trick to getting your washes to look transparent is to use plenty of water when you paint with your watercolor paint. Somehow that makes the painting look like light is shining through. It's called watercolor for a reason. <laughs> you add water and that can just add such beautiful effects. And here, I really wanted to pop out his bottom jaw. So I did put a little bit of ultramarine blue, but I'm being really judicious with it. I'm being really careful. 
Now I am deciding to put a little bit more darkness behind his ear because I felt like his ear was getting lost and it's such a cute part of his personality. I really felt like that story needed to be told better by providing more contrast and it's a white ear so that makes it a beautiful um, object to use contrast with because it is white. So I put some blue behind there and then I mixed a little mixed a little red in and that's another trick to make your transparent colors really sing is to keep the color changing as you move through the painting. Uh, try with each brush stroke load your brush with a little bit different color and that will add variety to your paint and to your painting to make it look like it's really glowing because light is always changing and if you want it to look transparent keeping the color moving will help do that and then i just added a little bit of splashes to add some interesting detail near the face area because those little details will help the viewer's eye remember to go back to the dog's face i'm mixing up a little bit of red here to uh, just balance out the values. I'm getting to the point in the painting where it's time to start balancing out the values. And what I mean by that is if you look at your reference photo and pick two different points on the dog, just choose any random points or a specific point like um, that yellow line going from his eye to under his ear. How dark is that in comparison to his cheek color? And do I need to adjust the values in relation to each other there? And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm adding a little bit more purple because the saturated reference photo helps me realize that area is a little purple, which is a beautiful glowing color next to that orange. And then I'm going to just paint in his collar. And again, watch how I change the color slightly close to the edge of his chest, it's redder. And then I moved to purple and I try to keep the colors changing to keep that looking really beautiful. And that really helps um, really zhuzh up the transparent look, even with these darker colors. So when you're painting any area, try to keep the values stay the same, but the colors change. Do you see how it's a dark purple and a dark red in his collar? And then um, in other areas of his body, they're lighter colors, but they're, each color is different, but the value stays the same. That really helps the transparent colors look like they're glowing even more. If you use just a flat color, it looks flat. And light is not flat. Transparency is not flat. It's almost like it's alive. So to help it look alive, use different colors in every brush stroke you take. And easier said than done, I know. I always forget. I forget a lot. <laughs> Again, I'm moving through this really quickly. I'm not able to explain every little thing I'm doing. I am painting on dry paper, but um, that's why it's really fun to come join my Patreon. And you can just watch this whole painting. This one took, I think, an hour and a half. So it's an hour and a half of footage with me fully explaining it. And here, look, I put a triangle on the reference photo so you could see how I think as an artist. I'm thinking in terms of shapes, not I'm painting an eye. I'm painting a shape of shadow around the eye and it's in a triangle shape. And I drew that triangle on the reference photo so you guys could see what I mean. And then I draw, I paint that same triangle onto the dog. This is why I tell everybody who is like, it's cheating if you, if you trace. No, because look how much, how many drawing skills I'm having to use. I'm having to use my drawing skills to look at that triangle and get the shape of the triangle correct on the face to match the triangle in the reference photo. And I'm doing that with drawing skills, not from a tracing, even though this started as a tracing. Again, uh, the reference photo is telling me in relation to each other, the value of that orange line from his eye to under his ear is darker than everything else in the vicinity other than the dark colors in the ear. So I needed to get that a little darker. Now I felt like his, the edge of his face, which is an interesting edge. It has a lot of beautiful curves in it. And that story needs to be told to explain 
the dog's face more so I decided to put a little bit more darkness behind his face in the background to pop out the white edges of his face just a little. I didn't want to get too heavy handed because I wanted this painting to look like it's glowing and if I put a super dark background in it like I did in that first painting it's going to look muddy and heavy. It's not going to look light and airy and fresh. So notice how I just put the dark edge around the edge of the dog's face and then blended it out with clear water so that it merges into lightness into the background. And then I'm going to put in the mouth with some watery lamp black. And as long as you're not doing big areas of dark black heaviness, it will still look transparent overall as a painting. And I'm just adding a little bit of values here and there to the smaller details now. Putting in those important whisker dots, to me, whisker dots really are important to get right and to really get them, um, get those little details in. It's like the jewelry. If you haven't seen my video about jewelry and why it's important, then I will link that here so you can watch my jewelry video. Right now I'm adding the jewelry, the small little details that trick the viewer's eye into thinking they're seeing more realism than what is really there. And here's my three paintings that I did from the first one that was totally a wreck because it was heavy and muddy, then the middle one, which is better, and then the final one where I really achieved my goals of achieving that beautiful transparent color. So I hope this helps you as well realize what transparent watercolor is and also how to achieve it effectively. I'll see you all next time. Bye everybody.